All right, the last quick demo I'm going to do is how to uh, work with wood flooring. Now, Revit actually comes preloaded with some pretty decent ones. Um, however, you know, you have to go hunting through them. So you may already have in your mood boards or an image file that you know you really like and want to use. Um, the other thing is make sure you're getting a seamless texture. This is one you can get from any kind of seamless texture library. Um, I'm not going to make you like go to a manufacturer. The seamless texture libraries have great image files for, for wood flooring. Again, because it's wood flooring, you want to make sure it's showing the planks, kind of the divisions in the wood, a lot like with the tile and we do with um, the grout lines. All right, so first thing I'm going to show you though is you go to manage, you go to materials. Now the default um, here in Revit is an oak flooring. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna literally type in oak and we'll kind of like see how it comes up here. Um, a lot of times it's just sort of there in your drop down list, but sometimes it's gonna load some extra stuff for you. So what it's doing is actually this guy um, was down here in the library and I just kind of popped it up. So uh, you might not see the pictures here. Let me make it bigger. So I'm kind of gonna teach you a few things in this one. We didn't really get a chance into class to kind of troubleshoot this. So right now, oops, I kind of hit it by mistake. So if you don't see this, there's a little arrow here where it says materials library. So we're going to point that up. Um, you can look at it in a thumbnail or list view. I'm going to put list view for now because you can see a little picture in the name. So what Revit is doing is trying to be helpful. It saw that I was looking for oak and it's like, by the way, I have this other wood you might be interested in. So not all of them are flooring though. So some of these are woods that are going to be used in furniture. So like if you already have uh, furniture you've pulled in, this is all wood say from steel case. But um, this guy here, is the way I basically got it up there is you just we'll pretend we'll use birch for now. I don't know if it's in a flooring setup. Actually, the cherry might be. Um, you just press the little up arrow. Um, oh, wait, replace. I already have one there. Cherry, let's see. Uh, we'll keep both. Okay. So there's now a cherry. Oh, I see. There was a lighter cherry. Now there's a darker cherry. All right. So you can, if you see something pop up down here that you like, great, use it. If not, there's also like tile, that whole reference library. So I'm gonna use oak as my starter, this oak flooring. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna say duplicate. Again, I wanna, first we're gonna rename it. So I'm just gonna call this oak flooring. We'll make this like a dark one. All right, so dark. Um, and then remember, I wanna make sure I don't override this generic oak because it's not bad, it's, it's pretty good actually when it renders. So I'm gonna click on that white box. Now, if I don't see something that comes up with this library, there's a whole other hidden library that's here under this little white and blue box. If we click that, again, we go back to appearance library. We look at, take a look at flooring. We take a look at wood and there's gonna be lots of wood. Um, again, check, it's got, you know, it's got its um, plank kind of, uh, you know, variations and things like that. So I might wanna try this mystic brown, this dark, that is dark. So let's click on that, say apply. So, oh wait, nope, hold on, did I do that? All right, hold on, we click it over there. I think I think my apply was back over here. Okay, so here we are on apply. Here it is here. Um, I might not want it so shiny, so you can take down the gloss of it. So satin, it's gonna see now it's a little more rustic looking. Unfinished, it's gonna be even rougher when Revit renders it. So this is again, another reason why you wanna use like oak flooring as your base file to play with, because it'll give you these options that are real world, world options of how we, Finish wood. All right, so this one's pretty cool. I might want to use that. Um, so we'll say, okay, oops, oh no, I think I had to hit apply there too. Oh, it's saving. Let's give it a minute here. Okay, so Revit crashed to me. That's a reminder to all of you, and I'll try to remember in class. Every time you make a few materials or a batch of materials, hit Control S for whatever reason, it taxes your poor computer's memory making all these materials. Um, and I've been finding as I'm making these videos, it's, it's crashing in between sessions. So your old friend Control S, click it as much as you can after, like after you've kind of finished each round of making a material to save your sanity, because it's frustrating. I went back in and stuff was missing again too. All right, so in my case, it did save this. Oh, it, it lost the dark one we had made. So the one that I just demoed, it lost it. Yay. Um, so I'm not going to redo it, but I'm going to make a new one. This time I'm, I'm making it based on um, a material that I found a picture of from the seamless libraries that I like better. But what I just did is I clicked on oak flooring. I said duplicate. So here it is here. I'm going to rename it. This one's going to be oak flooring bleached. 
and I'm going to click that white box to not override the, the classic red oak here. So I'm going to click on the name of it. Now I'm going to navigate to my files here. So let me get over to there, my computer over here. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, there we go. All right, so I had two. I, they're kind of tiny here. One was herringbone. When I played with it in class, I, I didn't love how it looked. I did like this kind of long plank one. One of the things notice is the site that I downloaded it from, it told me exactly what's the real world size of this sample. So mine was seven by 12. So I kind of put that in the notes to not forget it. So I opened that. Um, so right now it, there's the picture, but it didn't pull in my seven by 12. So I'm gonna scroll down to here unclick it because I know for whatever reasons it's, it's trying to be a rectangle. So mine is seven foot by 12 foot, right? And that's what it should be really looking at, like. So I'm gonna click done. Again, I don't know if I want super glossy. So I'm gonna say semi-gloss varnish on that. I'm gonna say apply. Oh, before I go back up to graphics, click use render appearance. Uh, the nice thing is this is the hatch pattern. It looks like wood, that's cool. We can always change that if we wanted to, but right now that works fine. So apply, okay. I'm gonna control S to save this. So now to go do the wood, I'm gonna uh, put it in this kind of big open area section here. So I'm gonna go back over to architecture, floor architectural, and then way down at the bottom, there is a wood of, uh, finish one. So right here, it's the first one basically. I'm gonna click on edit type, duplicate this guy again. So this is gonna be wood finish. I'll just say wood bleached. B L E H H D. Okay. Um, click on edit. Again, change the picture. So click on the word oak flooring. Click on the three dots. And now instead, I'm going to pick this bleached one and say okay. And then okay. And okay again. <laughs> now instead of picking a rectangle up here under the modify kind of drawing part of it, I'm going to click uh, the straight line. And just kind of trace, um, we'll talk about this more in class, but I'm gonna go in the middle of the walls because eventually I wanna close up this empty white space between my rooms so sunshine isn't glaring in basically between the cracks of my floor. So I'm kind of going in the middle of the wall here, going up here. Now I already have a flooring here, so we'll see if it how it interacts with these guys as we kind of draw around the room. All right, so it's going over here. Sometimes it'll give you a little warning if, if your lines overlap too much. Um, normally it's oh, fairly forgiving. So see how I'm kind of going a little bit above where the, uh, the barrier is for the other kind of flooring. All right, so now as I go up here, um, you wanna make sure you're kind of lining it up. So if I stopped here, I can always just draw the line more. If the line kind of ended over here, I could kind of draw it over, but now it's a complete kind of enclosed shape. So I'm gonna click the green arrow and click over here to the side to see it. And there's my flooring. Um, this looks pretty good to me. And again, it's bleached out because there's so much sunlight coming in. One of the things you might wanna do is change the orientation of how they've laid these planks. Now for me, uh, the way interior design works is that often uh, this will help widen the space visually going in this way. So I might wanna keep it this way, but I'm gonna show you how to change the orientation of the planks if when you put it in, you don't like how they're running. Um, so in this case, um, that's gonna be controlled back in the materials. So we're gonna go to manage, we're gonna go to materials, and then it automatically will usually pull up the last material you worked on, which was this type of flooring. So in this case, I'm gonna click on the picture of the flooring and above where I changed the scale of it, there's this rotation. So I can put in 90 degrees, say done, say apply, say okay, let's see it's saving. And then it should have, oh yeah, it didn't just jump. So now it's going basically west, east instead of north, south. Um, for my purposes, I, I don't like that as much actually. I kind of like the earlier version. So I'm literally just gonna control Z and kind of undo that shift in orientation. Um, the tricky thing is if you want it to go say north, south, like here, but like west, east in another room, easiest thing to do honestly is go to materials duplicate this so label it whatever direction you're going in north south duplicate this guy make it west east and then just change the orientation you're gonna so you're gonna have to make basically two different kinds of floor finish and then two different kinds of floors back over here um it's a little bit of a funky workaround but like if i were to change this again it's gonna change all of them. Like all of the same material are gonna all change their orientation. So you basically need uh, 
for the computer to understand that it's two different materials. All right, so that's wood. Um, concrete, I can go over with any folks who need that. There is a default concrete in here. Um, there's actually several patterns of it. Again, behind the scenes in the library, you can tint it. Um, if you have any other types of flooring, just let me know. And I'm again, very happy to help you troubleshoot it in class too.